Now let's create some basic graphic elements. The first thing we need to do is go to View, down to Grid and Guides, and make sure your Smart Guides is checked on. Since mine is done, I'm going to click away. And next, I'm going to zoom in, Command and the plus sign, so that I can see my bottom edge of my document, because that's where we're going to make our first line. To create a line, choose your Line Segment tool, which is this in your toolbox. And then go down to the bottom of your toolbox and click on the default fill in stroke. This should give you a fill of none and a stroke color of solid black. To create a line, simply click once on the leftmost bleed edge, the, the uh, red bounding box around your document, and drag to the right. If you hold down your shift key, this will constrain it to be a solid horizontal line and drag all the way to the rightmost bleed edge. When you let go of your mouse first, this should give you a nice horizontal line going all the way across your document. With the line created, let's change its width by going to the top of our control panel and setting it to be two points. I'll make it half, twice as thick. And then if we go all the way over to the left hand side, let's set it as a wide value of 9.75 inches. And that'll place it exactly where it needs to be on our page. Next, we need to break our line up into some different segments. In order to do this, let's find the pen tool in our toolbox. It's located just below the line, and if you don't see it, it may be nested under some of these other pen tools. We just want the regular pen tool. If you hover your mouse over the line, notice that it will change from a little star to a plus sign. We want to create two more points, and the position of these don't have to be 100% perfect, but when it's about four and a half inches over, which is right about here, a little over halfway, we want to click on the line, make sure we see the plus sign, and add an extra point to the line there. Let's do the same thing at the six inch margin. I'm looking at the top of my document, going over right about here, and then click right on my line to add another point right there. Let's choose our direct selection tool, the white arrow. Then I can click off of my line to deselect it. Then I can click on this rightmost segment and drag down, and it should break the line and give you something that looks like this. Let's pull it down. I'm going to hold down the shift key so it goes straight down until it gets to about 10.2. When you're done, let go, and you should have a little bend in your line like this. To make sure that this point is exactly where it needs to be, you can click on the point with your direct selection tool and have it highlighted. Then go at the top of your control panel and set the X position to be 4.875. When you hit return, that'll nudge it over into its correct X position location. Now is a good time to save our document, so let's go up to File and Save and continue on. Now let's see if we can curve these edges. Going back to your toolbox, click and hold on the pen tool and choose the Convert Direction Point tool. With this tool selected, click once on this point, hold down your shift key and drag it off to the right till it's about midway between the other point. Then click on the bottom point and drag it to the right. This will give us another Bezier curve. And drag it till it's about halfway through there. And this should give you a nice S curve connecting those two points. The final thing we need to do is to go back to our toolbox and select our pen tool. Then we're going to connect the leftmost side and rightmost side and turn this into a regular box. Starting off on the right hand side, hover your mouse over that last point. Notice that a little line will appear. When that line appears, click once and you've connected to that point. And let's follow our outer bleed edge to connect up to the beginning point. So I'm going to click once down here. Then we'll go over to our far left hand corner, click once over here and then click once right here, and that will connect it back to its original starting point. This is a good point to save, so let's go to File and Save and continue on. To change the color values, first let's choose our selection tool, the black arrow, and make sure our object is selected. Next, if you go up to the very top right-hand corner of your control panel, click on the little three icons, three bar icons, 
And let's make sure dimensions includes stroke weight is unchecked. So I'm going to check that to deselect that one. This is the way it should look. With our object still selected, we can go to the bottom of our toolbox and let's swap out the fill and stroke color to give it a solid black fill and a stroke of none. To change and select a color, let's go up to window and open our color panel if we don't already see it. Go to color and then choose color again. This will give us our color panel. Now with this panel, we want to see the CMYK values. So click on the options and choose CMYK. This will bring up our CMYK color picker. Then we want to change these values for the fill color to be about 85, 50, 85, and then 40. If your numbers are off by a little bit, that's okay. Notice that the object is now turned into this dark green and we want to save this green color. So let's go back to our color panel and choose add to swatches. This way we can use it later. This is a good point to save. So let's go to file and save. I'm also going to pull my color panel back off to the side and let's close it out. Now let's create a rectangle frame. If you go to our toolbox, choose the rectangle frame tool. Notice that this one has an X going across the regular rectangle. This means it can accept content. I'm going to hold down my command key and then click away to deselect my object and make sure your default fill and stroke is selected with the fill of none and a stroke of white. With a rectangle frame, you can hold down your shift key and click and drag anywhere on your document to create a rectangle that's about one and a quarter inches wide and tall. When you let go, this will create a no fill box that's got an X going through it. To place it exactly on the page, let's go to the top left of our control panel, choose the bottom left reference point. Let's set your X position to be at one, hit tab, and your Y position to be exactly at nine inches. This will place it exactly right here on your page. This is a good point to save, so let's go to File and Save and continue on. To clone and align and distribute multiple uh, rectangles, let's choose our black arrow selection tool. Then hold down the Option key as you click and drag to the right. Your Smart Guides should be on, and let's give it about an eighth of an inch distance between these two. Right about there. Let go. To do the same for this one, hold down the Option key again. Notice you get your double arrow. Click and drag. And we want to drag until you see the double arrows between both of those, meaning that it's the same distance between both of those. When you let go of your mouse, you get another one. To do this again, but in a quicker fashion, let's go up to Edit, down to, excuse me, go to Object, down to Transform, and choose Transform again. This will do it again. And another way you can do the fourth one is to go to edit and choose duplicate and it will duplicate it again. This should give you the five frames that we need. Now to bring them all closer together, choose your black arrow selection tool. I want you to click and drag until you can select all five of the frames with them all five selected. Then click on the leftmost edge, hold down your space bar, and drag inward. Notice that this will bring in all of the boxes without changing the size of the boxes. As long as you're holding down the space bar, this will work perfectly. Bring it in until they're all touching their edges. When you release the space, your mouse first, then release the space bar, they should all be brought together. Now click again on the left, excuse me, rightmost edge. And without holding the space bar, let's drag everything in until it gives you a feedback of about 5.5. Now let's go up to Object, choose Group, and group all five of these together as one solid object. The next thing we want to do is to bring these five frames and align them to the bottom left of our green object. Hold down Shift and click on your green object so you have both your five frames and the green selected. Let's open up our alignment menu. Let's see it. Let's go to Window and choose Object and Layout, then Align. Under the Align to section, make, make sure Align to Selection is selected. 
Then we're going to choose the align to the left edge and align to the bottom edge. And that'll bring it over and down on top of the green one. Let's pull our alignment back over to the side just to get it out of the way and continue on. I'm going to deselect everything by clicking away, then click once on your empty frames to select them. Let's go up to our control panel. We'll give it a three inch stroke and let's set the fill or excuse me, the stroke color to be paper. This will give it a white stroke around all of them. With this, it's a good point to save. So let's go to file and save and continue on. To create a rounded corner specifically for this rightmost frame, let's deselect everything. Then I'm going to double click on this rightmost frame to select only it. And then to open up our corner options, go to the top of your control panel and locate this icon. If you hold down option as you click on the icon, this will bring up your corner options dialog box. Make sure preview is turned on so you can see the changes that you make. And then we're going to unlink all of these because we only want to make a change to the top rightmost corner. For this one, choose rounded and then set the amount of roundedness to 0.45 inches. When you say OK, this will round off just that one. This is a good point to save and go on to the next stage.